Now the students, today we are going to study the design issues of the data link layer. So basically we are going to discuss the functions that the data link layer provides us. Now there are three main functions of a data link layer. The first one is providing well defined service interface to the network layer. So when I say service interface, interface uh, interface is basically a medium through which one layer communicates with the another layer. Now when uh, you know that a layer below basically provides services to the layer above it, right? So that means uh, we can say that the layer below is providing services to the layer above it. So when we know that data link layer is below the network layer, so that means data link layer is that layer which would be providing services to the network layer. Now, in order to provide services to the network layer, data link layer must have an interface through which it can provide those services to the layer immediately above it, which is the network layer, right? So, basically, it provides well-defined service interface to the network layer. Then, it deals with the transmission errors. So, transmission errors are the errors in data which may occur during the transmission of data, right? So dealing with those errors, basically finding out those errors and then correcting those errors is also the function of the data link layer. Then is regulating the flow of data, right? Regulating the flow of data means to seeing that the data rate is optimum. Neither it is too slow so that this receiver is sitting idle and waiting for it, nor is it too fast so that the receiver is not able to process the earlier received data and meanwhile the other data arrives. It shouldn't be like this also. So the data should arrive at the receiver's end at a rate at which it is able to process it. So basically we are here concerned about the fact that the receivers are not swamped by fast senders, right? So these are the three basic fun functionalities of the DLL or the data link layer. Now to achieve all this, the data link layer takes the packets it gets from the network layer. So basically the data that it gets from the network layer, that data here is, uh, is known as the packets. And then when those packets are received by the data link layer, they are encapsulated in the form of frames for transmission. So the data unit at the network layer is called packets. And at the uh, data link layer, it is known as frames, right? Now, what is the format of a frame? Each frame basically consists of the frame header, a payload, payload field. Payload field is actually the actual data packet and a frame tailor. So, in between is a payload field, which is the actual data that you intend to transmit. And other than that, you have a header at the beginning of the payload field and a trailer at the end of the payload field. So, this is the basic format of a frame. Now, what are the services that the data link layer provides to the network layer? So the services that the data link layer provides to the network layer are transferring data from the network layer on, on the source machine to the network layer on the destination machine. So this is a virtual visualization. We usually visualize it in a way that the network layer on the source machine is transmitting the data directly to the network layer on the destination machine because it is easier to understand it this way. So this is a virtual thing that is happening from the, so, the network layer on the source machine transmitting the data to the network layer on the destination machine. And then the network layer hands over some bits to the data link layer for the transmission to the destination, right? So basically the job of the data link layer is to transmit the bits to the destination machine so that they can be handed over to the network layer. So actually what is happening? Actually the data is being transmitted at the bottom most layer to the destination machine that is the physical layer and from there on it moves finally to the network layer going through the data link layer. But we visualize it how we visualize it that the network layer on the source, source machine is directly transferring it to the network layer on the destination machine because it is easy to visualize it that way. But actually 
the data is transmitted down to the physical layer on the source machine from there it is handed over to the physical layer on the destination machine and from there it goes through the data link layer up till the network layer and so on till the highest which is the application layer so basically the data link layer is responsible for transmitting the raw bits to the destination machine so that they can be handed over the to the network layer of the destination machine now how does it actually happen uh, uh, from our uh, imaginary visualization which is uh, quite different from the actual thing that is happening so this is the actual data path so we have the physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer and going on to the application layer so basically from the network layer the data moves down to the destiny data link layer on the source machine so this is the basically source machine that we are talking of and this is the source machine and this is the destination machine right so we actually visual, uh, visualize in a way that the data network layer here is directly transmitting the data to the network layer here but actually this is not happening what happens is that the um, data is transmitted from the network layer on the source machine to the data link layer on the same source machine then it goes down to the physical layer and from the physical layer it actually is transmitted to the physical layer of the destination machine and from there it goes up till the network layer and till the final most layer so this is the actual path of transmitting the data from the network layer on the source machine to the network layer on the destination machine now let us look at the uh, main services that are provided or offered by the data link layer the first one is your unacknowledged connectionless service second is your acknowledged connectionless service and third is your acknowledged connection oriented services so basically three kinds of services are being provided by the data link layer one is the unacknowledged connectionless service second is the acknowledged connectionless service so first two services both are connectionless the only difference is first one is unacknowledged and second one is acknowledged and third one is both acknowledged and connection oriented so basically the third service is your acknowledged connection oriented service okay so we'll start with the first one which is the unacknowledged connectionless service now here the source machine sends independent frames to the destination machine independent frames means uh, each frame is independent to choose its own path it does not choose a path where it does not follow the same path which the previous frames have chosen so each frame is basically independent to choose its own path right without having the destination machine acknowledge them that means when the frames have been received by the destination machine it does not acknowledge the reception of those frames meaning it does not tell the receiver that i have received these frames right no logical connection is established beforehand so basically when i say logical connection that means there is no such dedicated connection for that particular sender or receiver right so uh since no logical connection is established beforehand hence it is not also released afterwards because it is not a dedicated or an exclusive connection for those two machines now if a frame is lost due to noise on the line right no attempt is made to detect the loss or recover from it in the data link layer so if in case a frame frame gets lost so first of all there is no acknowledgement even for the frames that have been received and if in case a frame has been lost there is no attempt made to detect the loss of that frame or recover from it right so no are you detecting the loss of that frame no are you trying to recover that frame after a loss now this type is of service is appropriate when the error rate is very low when you are sure of the fact that the error rate would be very low and hence we would not need any such uh, detection of the loss of frame or recovery of the frame in such scenarios you can go for the unacknowledged connectionless service so, right so in this case the recovery of the lost frames can be left to the higher layers because here it is not the responsibility of the data link layer either to detect the loss of the frames or to recover the frames so 
this part is left to the higher layers. So in such case, when the error rate is low, you can choose for unacknowledged connectionless service of the data link layer. So basically, we mean to say that it is appropriate for real time uh, uh, real time communication or real time traffic, such as your voice calling, uh, right, video calling, wherein data. Uh, 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 you know, the real time data is more important. That means receiving the data in real time is more important than bad data. So basically late data is a bad thing here, is a worse thing here instead of a bad data. So you can afford to have a little bit of errors in the data, but you cannot have to afford to have delay in the reception of data. So in such real time uh, communications, the unacknowledged connectionless services appropriate. Now, uh, basically most of the LANs that are used nowadays use unacknowledged connectionless service in the data link layer. Moving on to the second type of service provided by the uh, data link layer is your acknowledged connectionless service. So what is your acknowledged connectionless service? Again, it is a connectionless service. So that means there is no logical connection set of or a dedicated connection for the sender or receiver, right? But the difference here is that each frame is acknowledged individually. That means the receiver sends you an acknowledgement for each frame that it receives so that the sender knows that its frame has been received properly. So basically this is a very good way of letting the sender know that whether a frame has been received properly or not. Now if the acknowledgement does not come within a specified time limit, so there is a specific time interval within which the acknowledgement should come. If it comes within that specific time interval, that means that the frame has been very well received. And if it does not come within that specific time interval, then the frame can be sent again. That means the receiver assumes that, okay, I have not received my acknowledgement within this time interval. That means my frame has not been received. So in that case, I should resend my frame. Okay, now next is your connection oriented service. This is the last service of the data link layer that we'll be discussing. So basically it is connection oriented. That means the source machine and the destination machine establish a connection before any data are transferred. That means a dedicated connection is established for the source and destination. And each frame that is sent over the connection is numbered. You give numbering to the frames to have a proper sequence of the frames. So that if in case any frame arrives out of order at the destination, it can be arranged back in the proper sequence, right? And the data link here here guarantees that each frame sent is received. So each frame that is sent is received or not, that is completely the responsibility of the data link layer and it will ensure that each frame that has been sent should be received by the receiver, right? Further, it also guarantees that each frame is received exactly once. Now, basically, we were guaranteeing the reception of frames in case of acknowledged a connectionless service also but there the problem was that we could have duplicate frames frames being sent to the receiver there why because if the acknowledgement was not coming within a specific time interval the sender was assuming that the frame has not been received and hence it was said resending the frame right uh, which uh, the in this case the scenario could be that the acknowledgement was uh, received a little late and hence the frame was already received and you resend the frame that means there were duplicate frames but this is not happening here so that means the data link clear guarantees that each frame is sent exactly once and not more than that hence uh, it uh, ensures that there are no duplicate frames, right? Also, because of the proper numbering of the frames, it ensures that the frames are received in the right order. Whereas in case of a connectionless service, as I said, a lost acknowledgement, if an acknowledgement is lost, it causes a packet to be resent by the sender and hence causes duplicate frames. Now, basically, uh, talking of the connection-oriented services, they have three distinct phases. First is your connection establishment. 
after the connection is established, the data transmission and after all the data has been transmitted, connection termination. So basically connection establishment is establishing a connection by both the sides, that is by the sender and receiver. They basically initialize their counter variables to keep a track of the frames that have been sent and so that they have been sent in the proper order also, right? Which uh, keeping a track of which frames have been received and which one not. So basically connection is established between both the sender and the receiver. Once the connection is established, that means they are ready to exchange data. The data transmission happens. In this phase, frames are actually transmitted. And after the frames have been transmitted, that means we do not need the connection any longer. So we can terminate that connection in this, which is the third and final phase of uh, the connection oriented services, the connection is released finally. So all the resources, all the variables related to that uh, connection, which were basically reserved for that connection, which include the variables, the counter variables, the buffers and other resources are also released now. Finally, so it is quite similar to the telephone connection wherein if you want to dial up a telephone, uh, your friend's phone, you first of all establish a connection by dialing his number. So that is connection establishment. Then you transmit the data, you talk to your friend and when you are your talking is done, you finally hang up the phone. That means the connection is terminated. So this is all in connection oriented services.